Merry Christmas, mga katribu, and welcome to another episode of Kalingang Katribu Legal Diaries. And I am Venice Bautista, and today we are joined by Aranas Cruz, Araneta Parker, and Faustino Law Offices, Associate Lawyer, Attorney Alfred Campagnano. Good afternoon and Merry Christmas, Attorney! Uh, good afternoon and happy holidays. <laughs> Tuloy-tuloy pa rin tayo no, sa pagbibigay impormasyon sa ating mga katribu pagdating sa mga usaping legal. At ngayong araw naman, tatalahay natin ang Republic Act 7610. Ayan, kaya simulan na po natin yung mga katanungan. So ano po ba ito Republic Act 7610? Ano po yung nakapapaloob dito? Ang Republic Act uh, 7610, uh, no? is also known as yung, uh, this is the law against child abuse in all its forms. Mm -hmm. So, kung titignan natin dito, this is consistent actually with the policy of the state to protect children from all forms of abuse, neglect, mm -hmm. cruelty, and exploitation and discrimination. As you will see there in the Declaration of State Policies, as stated in 7610. Mm -hmm. However, ang pinaka-importante dito, and I think the viewers should uh, take particular note of, mm -hmm. is this law was enacted under the principle of parents patriae. Na kung saan, remember, di ba parang the family as the basic unit of society, meron siya dapat magulang, the mom and the dad. Mm -hmm. And then supposedly, the relatives, kung talagang nawala, wala na, and other guardians. However, there is this principle of parents patriae, wherein the government, in certain instances, serve as the parent of, the, of its citizens. In this case, uh, in the case of uh, the law, or the legislation against child abuse, then that would be the children, as defined under the law. So they are basically your other parent. No? So si, si Daddy Duterte, mm. <laughs> at si Mami Lenny, <laughs> para ganyan yung labas nila dyan. Of course, that, do not confuse that. Ha? Baka yung mga hindi kayo ng support sa kanila. <laughs> what I'm just simply saying is, the government is also, uh, in this case, is playing a parental role. Because basically, it's enacting legislation to protect children from abuse. And exploitation. Okay, so sa ang mga pagkakataon naman po ito, maaaring mag-take effect? Actually, um, mag-take effect ito in the concept, uh, well, syempre, upon legislation, it already is taking effect, no? Mm. But the law, in this case, tries to create an environment for children wherein their development will not be hampered. So, makakakita kayo dyan, one of the salient features of this law is the, uh, the recurring condition that the child's normal development should not be stifled or the normal development of the child should be ensured. So, one of these things then is makikita nyo dyan yung the concept of maltreatment whether habitual or not, is proscribed or, or prohibited by the law, such as psychological and physical abuse, mm -hmm. neglect, cruelty, of course, yung nakikita natin sa TV, sexual abuse and emotional maltreatment, deeds or act that debases or degrades the, you know, the, the intrinsic worth of the child mm -hmm. or the unreasonable deprivation of the basic needs of these children. No, because we recognize for a fact that minors are one of the most vulnerable uh, constituents of the country. Okay, so I'm just curious, what about the people like in poverty? Exempted po ba sila sa mga ganun? Like talagang hindi na lang ma-provide yung mga anak nila? Ganun. Well, the law really does not uh, qualify, no? as to whether or not you are from a low-income family or from a middle-to-high-income family. Mm -hmm. Because the point here is the, the, the idea of the state is that children shouldn't really be, you know, should, children should be free to be children. 
Mm-hmm. That's the concept there. So as much as possible, diba, they, should, they should be prohibited from working yes. and mm-hmm. just simply be enjoying their childhood. So yan yung mga situations that that the law is aiming to achieve mm-hmm. by by creating these kinds of ano uh, these kinds of legislation because we understand no for example yung yung mga children that are working for their basic needs in the first place it should be the parents who should be providing for these children and not for them and uh, and the minors not fending for themselves mm-hmm. right so we realize that there are on the ground you know uh, realities na nakikita natin but the law is aiming to remove that from from reality mm-hmm. and to ensure na the children as i said live their lives as children okay so yung age naman po like hanggang anong edad yung cover nitong republic act it's a very interesting question no because The common idea is, when you say 18, uh, minor or a child, mm-hmm. we're talking about people who are below 18 years old. However, the law defines children as, of course, on two prongs. First uh-huh. is, yung children that are the children are considered as children if they are below 18 years of age. That's a given, no? Mm-hmm. But one thing is apparently. If a person is already over 18 years old, but is unable to protect themselves from exploitation, abuse, neglect, or is not able to provide for themselves because of a physical or a mental condition, under the law they are considered as uh, they are considered as children and is protected by 7610. Oh, okay. So, may age po ba when it comes to the disability, people with disability, or wala naman? Yeah, that's what, uh, that walang, ano, walang, walang age. age In fact, even if you're beyond 18 years of age, okay. but you're unable to take care of yourself okay. or to protect yourself from abuse, neglect, cruelty, and exploitation because of a physical or a mental disability or condition, then you are considered as a child mm-hmm. under the law. Okay, so that's good to hear. My protection yung mga ganong tao, di ba? Like, for those people that who cannot protect or fend for themselves. So now, ano po yung mga grounds sa paglabag nito? Well, kapag grounds talaga, well, um, when it comes to yung grounds to violate the law, then the idea here is if you basically subject a child to maltreatment, Then covered na yan. However, if you're going to go over the law, there are there the aside from having this encompassing idea of child abuse mm-hmm. or child cruelty, may mga sinasayt sila na specific instances that uh, are being targeted, no? When it comes to this kinds of child abuse, because eto nga naman in reality are the forms of abuse that children normally face mm-hmm. no for example uh, the law will actually be considered as tra- uh, prohibit of course child prostitution this is the effect, or this is a penalized act wherein for money for profit or for any consideration whether uh, sorry for any consideration whether by an adult or by a syndicate or a group basically uh, engages a child for sexual intercourse mm-hmm. or lascivious conduct. So yan yung mga uh, that's that's the idea there. No, prostitu- child prostitution is one of those kinds of abuse. Mm-hmm. One another penalized act under this uh, concept of child prostitution is even an attempt to commit child prostitution is you know, is already an is already an offense in itself so one one way that the law defines attempt to commit child prostitution is if you are not the relative of a child no and you are and then you are found to bring a child in a hotel in a motel in a massage clinic in a massage clinic mm. or in any tourist destination and then you service a child for any uh, leisurely activity 
such as yung papamasahe ka sa bata or magpapaano ka sa you know, sauna, bar, or health clubs, mm. no? Engaging the services of child in this context, then that is treated as attempt to commit child prostitution. Of course, the condition there is hindi ikaw yung magulang. Yeah. Mm-mm. No? Okay. So, so uh, another... Uh, yeah, sorry. No, it's okay, but please continue. Uh, another penalized act would be yung child trafficking. Now, this is a broader a kind of abuse as opposed to child prostitution because broader in a sense that child trafficking is one of the sources why child prostitution happens. Yes. No? So child trafficking is basically the trading and dealing with children, including the act or buying or selling of a child for money or for any consideration. So para for example, ipapalit mo yung anak mo para sa kalabaw. That's barter, but that, that, that technically is also a form of child trafficking. And that is prohibited by law. And similar to child prostitution, an attempt to child traffic is likewise a punishable offense. Mm-hmm. So, under the law, an attempt to commit child trafficking is seen in in this in this ways, but of course not necessarily an exclu- exclusive, no? to these ways. So a child, for example, is traveling alone to a foreign country without the necessary uh, documentation no, for from the DSWD or from the written permits of a child. So mag-ingat-ingat din tayo, especially on those instances that, um, that for example, na normally nakikita ko to sa instances na kung sa magkahiwalay na yung magulang, mm-hmm. of course, separated in fact, or even separated legally, No? But the person who does who does not have custody, for example, usually the father, eh, hindi yan nakakuha ng permit from the mother, then that can also be a considered, uh, that can also be a ground to charge that person with an attempt to uh-huh. child traffic. Because the absence of the parental consent, di ba? in order for that child to be brought abroad, is already, you know, is, uh, what call this, can be classified as child trafficking. Also, child trafficking is nagre-recruit ka ng mga babae or ng couples na parang, 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 parang you're recruiting them to bear children. Parang to, for purposes of committing child trafficking. So, a good analogy here is parang nagre-recruit ka ng ang pangit ng pakinggan, no? Mm-hmm. Parang nagre-recruit ng baka. Kumukuha ka ng baka para palaguin. No? So, that's that's the idea here, no? Nung recruiting women or couples to bear children for the purpose of child trafficking. Another thing na dapat mag-ingat din is yung simulation of birth. Kasi I think, I think I wrote an article about this in the Tribune. Yung simulation of birth, yung mga instances where in the doctor or pinapakiusapan yung doktor, yung health worker, na ipapangalan na lang sa akin yung anak na na, ipa, na nung bata pala, so di ba? Para papamukay mo anak. But that is that alone of course is not child trafficking, but if mapatunayan that there is an intention to traffic the child, then that is considered as an attempt to okay. ano, to traffic the child. And lastly, I suppose on child trafficking is dito rin yung makikita mo yung you're basically recruiting a child from low-income families, no? In order to, again, for the purposes of child trafficking. So yan yung parang mga, kaya ko nabanggit kanina na they are one of the most vulnerable sectors of society because even especially on those that are coming from low-income brackets, Because ang kakalabas niyan is the need, the need and want of these children to help their families mm. can actually be a driving motivation for them to say yes, even if child trafficking itself is an illegal act. And then mm. another is obscene publications and indecent shows. Ang, ang interesting lang dito sa obscene publications and indecent shows, kasi this is self-explanatory, but I recall correctly, I think in 20, 2018 or 2019, there was this, ano, yung parang 
I think that it was the FBI or the CIA. I'm not sure, no, or any. It's a Western country that they actually developed a program. Na kung saan parang there was this. Yung parang inaano nila. There the design of that is bosses ng bata and picture siya ng bata. So para it is as if you're talking to a child, pero it's already tracking yung mga predators online. Mm. So why am I saying this? Because Again, in obscene publications and indecent shows, this is more often than not one of the primary sources of child abuse and exploitation. Yung mga nagpapa-exhibition na pina, na pina, they're asking these minors to you know to do indecent things. Yeah. That in itself is again dangerous to the child. And of course, other acts of abuses, the encompassing idea of maltreatment Mm-mm. and abuse. Okay, so what about yung mga parents who beat their child uh, in the grounds na discipline? Pero alam mo yun, medyo parang boundary na siya ng abuse talaga. Paano yung ganun? Well, kasi to me lang, ano siya na, parang, technically speaking, whether that abuse, physical or not, is habitual, may be considered as child abuse. However, as you said it, as you said it yourself, If the oh, if the if the act is in itself a disciplinary action mm-hmm. and as far uh, disciplinary disciplinary rather than abusive, then there is a sort of defense mm-hmm. on the part of the, of the on the part of the parents. Mm-hmm. Pero kasi ikakalibrate mo din yan sa ex, sa concept na excessive. Kasi there's a difference naman na pinalo ka once. And then there's a difference that pinalo ka once and then pinalo ka with a hanger, for example. And then bigla na lang pinalo ka with a hammer. <laughs> so the idea here is yung excessive force. So it's really a case-to-case basis mm-hmm. because, for one, if the, if the intention is to really simply discipline the child, then as far as the element of criminal intent is concerned, no? then it's arguably a defense on the part of the parents. Mm-hmm. Pero that intention can, of course, intention is a state of mind. So no lawyer can actually directly prove intention. Diba? So, okay. ba na, so we can rely only on the parent, for example, na kinakasuhan, to, to say that this is his or her intention mm-hmm. when he or she physically inflicted for the child. Mm-hmm. But, again, since intention uh, is a state of mind, we look also at the circumstances. What was the kind of force used on this child and whether it meets the standard of, you know, being simply disciplinary or if it's already dangerous to the child. Because even if the child, even if the mom or the dad says it's disciplinary, if there is excessive use of force, or if the action is already so dangerous to the health, so dangerous to the life of the child, then that intention that betrays the intention of being disciplinary in nature. Para for example, pinaglakad mo siya sa umaapoy na na uling, kasi you wanted to discipline him, mga ganyan, di ba? So You look at the case to case scenario, but as a rule, I think, no, if the purpose is disciplinary in character, then it's really not, it does not fall under child abuse, mm-hmm. but it's always a case to case basis because any person can simply claim that it's disciplinary in nature. So, pwede rin namang i-check din yung ano ba talaga ginawa. Mm-hmm. Because, what, because, Sila sabi nga niya disciplinary pero baka naman excessive yung force or violence that was inflicted on the child and that in itself well basically is child abuse as contemplated under the law. Yeah, thank you for clarifying attorney. Now another question lang no, I just want to clarify you mentioned earlier about the psychological abuse. Can you give us an example para lang you know ma- malaman namin ng mga viewers din? na ano expert no on <laughs> on psychology mm. pero siguro i think 
uh, uh, at the top of my head, psychological abuse could can come either through yung nakikita nag-aawa yung parents because that to me is traumatic yeah. to the child. Mm. Because remember, the law qualifies that all individuals should create an environment for where a child's development is promoted. No? So hindi lang yun because na, hindi lang siya direct act na kung saan ano ba ang ginagawa ng magulang as vis-a-vis dun sa bata. Mm. No. It also comes with the idea that the home should be a home. So if that home where the child or if that place where the child is being kept, no, then it's also possible that psychological abuse can come from the environment na, na kung saan inilalagay yung bata. Mm-hmm. Diba? So if for example, eh, tumitira kayo sa mga areas of armed conflict, Diba? Although the, the mother and the father are not directly imputing yeah. violence against the child, but the fact is you are letting you are allowing that family, no, to be under such circumstance can also qualify as psychological abuse. Okay. Oh, hi, attorney. Uh, we'd love to know more. No, and na natutunan ngayon. But for now, we'll just take a short break. Botomoto Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. Christmas saya, pagsama-sama. Sama nyo tuwing umaga sa programang Gising na, Roy Pelovelo, Kompi Manalo, at Ilya Badilio Crisostomo, Vernon Velasco, Kim Sancha, at Jerk Balagtas. Abangan ang programang Gising na mula alas 8 hanggang alas 9 ng umaga sa Facebook page ng Daily Tribune. Inabas na ang mainit na kape at samahan kami sa inyong pag-almusal, mga katribo. Sama-sama natin alamin ang mga natatagong istorya sa mga latest na kaganapan sa loob at labas ng bansa. Simulan natin ang bawat umaga with good vibes sa mga informative and recreational segments ng aming programa. Maaari nyo rin ibahagi sa amin ang inyong opinion via Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribune Now sa YouTube. Makichika na rin sa latest showbiz happenings mga katribo. Kaya naman, magkita-kita po tayo mula lunes hanggang beres, alas 8 hanggang alas 9 ng umaga at magsama-sama po tayo sa Gising Na! Botomoto Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. Christmas saya, pagsama-sama. Welcome back to Legal Diaries. We are still joined by Attorney Alfred Campagnano as we talk about the Republic Act 7610 or basically known as the Protection of Children Against Abuse. Okay, so Attorney, uh, let's talk about naman yung mga nagpapatibay sa batas na ito. Ano-ano po ba yung mga yun? Mga nagpapatibay? Mm-mm. Well, kung nagpapatibay sa batas, then I think it's really a matter of implementation. And I think dyan papasok ang DSWD, which is basically the the primary agency that's handling uh, the implementation of the law. But of course, as you can see, and as we have also discussed, there is also yung women's desk na tinatawag mm-hmm. uh, na kung saan if there are complaints for uh, for and on for or against a person, no? because of an issue on abuse, then sila ang pwede mong lapitan. But kung titignan natin, there's also the law on anti-violence against women and children. Mm-hmm. So as I've discussed in the previous episode, no, na kung saan ang VAUSI also is basically anti-violence against a child, then they are complementary 
So it does not mean na uh, it does not mean that a person is being charged for a violence against child under 9262. It doesn't already prohibit another charge for 7610. Okay, so when now naman, when it comes to the yung kaparusahan no, sa mga lumalabag nito, may mga different po ba na parusa for the degrees? Like, kunwari, iba yung sa sexual, iba yung sa trafficking, physical, ganun. Uh, under the 7610, the, yung mga diniscuss natin, they are actually mm-hmm. prescribed penalties. no. So, for example... Uh, if it's child prostitution, then the penalty is reclusion temporal in its medium period to reclusion perpetual. Or perpetua, not perpetual. <laughs> so, pag sabi mo reclusion temporal in its medium period, uh, hindi ko kasi kabisado yung period niya. Eh. Mm-hmm. But, pag nag-start ka ng reclusion temporal under the law, then the penalty is 12 years and 1 day up to 20 years. Okay. So, yan ang period na titingnan natin. So kung in kung reclusion temporal in its medium period, then siguro we're looking at around 16 to 8, 16 to 15 to 18 years imprisonment mm-hmm. kasi that's the around nasa gitna medium period tayo. Eh. Mm-hmm. Tapos to reclusion perpetua, so meaning uh, that's basically 30 years in jail. Mm-hmm. Pag attempt naman, then you go to degrees lower. So, you're looking at uh, prison mayor. Pag sabi mo prison mayor, then sabi mo in its medium period, so prison mayor, uh, reclusion temporal in its medium period, so prison mayor, so baka most likely to degrees down, mga prison, uh, prison mayor in its medium or max maximum period. Pag siya mayong prison mayor, then the penalty is actually 6 years and 1 day up to 12 years. So when you're looking at medium or max medium or maximum, then prison mayor would be around 6, 9, mga sabihin mo na mga 8 to 12 years. Mm-hmm. For child trafficking, same pa din ang penalty. That's reclusion tempora. <laughs> Temporal. <laughs> to reclusion perpetua. Yan yung walang L, no? And obscene, ano, yung obscene or indecent shows, prison mayor yan in its medium and medium period. Now, it's really a matter of just going over the law on what are the penalties. But what I would like to give emphasis at this point is if the offender is uh, the parent okay. of the child, then automatic yan maximum period na pinag-uusapan natin mm. for whatever offense. So, instead of saying reclusion tempora, sorry, reclusion temporal to reclusion perpetua, then most likely if ikaw ang, if the parent is the violator or the offender, then most likely reclusion perpetua na agad yan. Oh, okay. Reclusion mayor medium period, then most likely reclusion mayor max. Ganyan okay. agad na magiging imposition niya. Sa bagay, no? Kasi they're supposed to be responsible for their children. So, exactly. No? Blood is bigger than water. And then Uh-oh. all of a sudden, sila pa ang naglalagay sa kahapahamakan mm-hmm. sa mga bata. Which is, di ba, it's really not just frowned upon, but of course, prohibited by law. Okay, so yun nga po. Kung magulang o guardian po ang may sala, kaya naman po mapupunta yung custody ng mga minor na victims pag nakulong yung kanilang mga magulang or guardians. Well, ganito siya, no? Pag immediate concern immediate concern sa custody, under the law, the DSWD will get custody of, of the child. Mm-hmm. So, magkakaro- parang sila muna ang magka- magka- magkakaroon ng custody over the child. Kasi nga, syempre, yung magulang ang pinag-uusapan dito. Mm-hmm. But, no, but, There can be custody hearings in this in this cases. Na kung saan para lang din ma-determine whether ibibigay ba sa collateral relatives or ibibigay ba with with other well with the ascendants mm-hmm. if yung magulang ang ano para lang mag-appoint ng legal guardian. Of course in its absence then yan yung the sad reality is baka mapunta sila sa orphanage. Mm, yeah. Okay. So 
Pagdating naman po sa employments ng minors, sa uh, anong punto po masasabi nito na klase ay pang-aabuso siya? Kasi ganito siya, no? under the law, although ito, I think typo ata ito when I was looking over the official gazette. Kasi ang understanding ko is a minor below 15 years of age is not allowed to work mm-hmm. as a general rule. And in fact, kung babasa kami enumeration sa law, parang ilalagay niya yung mga exceptions na kung saan kailan pwede magtrabaho mm-hmm. ang minor. <laughs> But in any case, what I'm saying here is the point wherein there is abuse is if it does not meet any of the qualifications no, as, as enumerated by the law. Mm-hmm. So for example, when a child... Uh, so ano ba yung mga instances where a child below 15 years of age may work? So that one, for example, is when a child works directly under the sole responsibility of his parents or legal guardian and where only members of the employer's family are employed. Provided diba, that the employment does not endanger his life, mm. his morals, and is not an obstacle to his or her primary and secondary education. So in this, for example, let's go hypothetical. Kung may anak ako, pwede siya magtrabaho for me. Di ba? Pero, if ang, ang business ko is a massage parlor, hindi na pwede. Okay. So that would obviously fall under doon sa pinag-uusapan natin na mga instances, no? Na baka possible maging treatment of child prostitution or mm-hmm. child trafficking. So, say for example, grocery store ang meron ako. Pwede magtrabaho yung minor for me, provided further, kasi wala naman yung danger sa buhay niya, di ba? Yeah. Wala naman danger sa buhay niya or sa kanyang morals. So, pwede yon pag grocery store. Pero kapag chemical plant ang aking, pag- ang aking business, hindi siya pwede doon because that is also hazardous to the life of the child. Now, if the first two boxes are checked, meaning it's a family business and I am personally supervising my mm-hmm. child in the work, The second condition is dapat this employment will not hinder the education of the minor. So, kung ang nangyayari dyan is because of that employment, eh ang nangyayari eh hindi na siya nakakapagsubmit ng assignments niya na nire-require sa kanya in high school or in uh, in elementary, then obviously this then obviously that can that employment is already a hindrance to the child's development. And as such, is violative, is a violation rather, of uh, 7 to 16. Oh. Another exception is when a child's employment or participation in in public or in entertainment is essential. Mm-hmm. Diba? Yan yung mga kita mo yung mga child actors, child actresses. Diba? They're basically minors. And yeah. they're earning more than I am. <laughs> diba? So, in that scenario, that that in itself is not a form of child abuse. Because, diba? Because it complies, I suppose it complies with the requirements of the law. In which case, the employment contract must be concluded between the pa- parent and, for example, si GMA. Uh, but, hindi lang sila. Apparently, the child must also consent or expressly agree to that service engagement. And at the same time, it must be approved by the Department of Labor and Employment. So, yan yung mga instances, no? Wherein a minor below 15 years of age may actually work. Okay, there we go. So, ano na pong mensahe nyo no, sa mga kabataang maaaring nakaranas ng mga pagsubok o pang mga aabuso na ganito sa mga magulang na hindi nakakaunawa na abuso na pala yung kanilang ginagawa sa mga anak nila? Well, well, uh, ano ba? I cannot really give a definitive advice mm. because I am blessed enough you know, to to not experience this when I was a child. Mm-hmm. Pero siguro kung if I will will if I will hazard an advice then for children I think I think we're past that point 
in our society na hindi ka na pwede makapag, makapag-open up sa parent mo. So, so maybe, no, maybe, it's also time na you should try to speak up and say if it already is bordering, bordering on abuse. But, if it's really, it, but, in certain instances, it's best to, you know, directly go to the, the go to the, to the appropriate agency so that they can actually assess for your help. So I think that's basically the best advice I can mm. give, no? Is go to the proper authorities if you think there's already abuse. Because okay. more often than not, if you try to open it up with any other adult, then baka ma, ano lang yan, ma-dismiss lang kayo in saying na ba, baka nag inartika lang or you're being too sensitive. But that's because, but that's the point. DSWD and their experts exist to actually assess that beyond cultural norms and beyond, you know, familiar tradition, familial traditions. So they're there to assist you. So if you think there's an abuse, I think I encourage the I encourage minors to actually seek help. Yeah, thank you for that advice, attorney. So we'll take another short break, and sa pagbalik natin, aalamin ang ating tribunal. Botomoto Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. Christmas saya, pagsama-sama. Be updated sa news and happenings katribu. Hatid ng Daily Tribune sa inyo ang mga balitang napapanahon sa loob at labas ng bansa. Kami na ang bahala sa paghahatid sa inyo ng mga latest and reliable news. We got you covered sa programang Tribune News on Q. Mapapanood mula umaga hanggang gabi, lunes hanggang biyernes sa Daily Tribune Facebook page at Tribune Now on YouTube. Botomoto Halalan 2022, the Daily Tribune special coverage. Christmas saya, pagsama-sama. Welcome back to Legal Diaries, mga katribu. So now that Attorney Alfred has further informed us about protection against child abuse, alamin naman natin ang tribunal na natuklasan namin. Okay, so tribunal. 8 in 10 Filipino children suffer from a form of violence. Most children experience violence where they should feel safest in their own homes, according to a new study of the Council for the Welfare of Children and the United Nations Children's Fund. So what do you think, attorney? <laughs> <laughs> cultural differences Mm-mm. between what is considered as violence then and what is considered as violence now. Mm-hmm. Not saying that that the I'm not saying na masyado sensitive ang mga bata ngayon and all that. Uh-huh. Because to me, I subscribe to the practices of child rearing or parenting right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, right now. As opposed to, I don't know, way back I don't know, 20 years ago. <laughs> mm. So I think what accounts for that 8 over 10 is because a lot of parents no, are still under that mm, traditional mindset mm. na ganito kasi nung bata kami, ganito kami nung pinalaki. Kung bakit, ano, and I turned out to be fine. And I am not discrediting that kind of experience because that to me, uh, sorry, not to me, but rather because, ganun nga eh. And who am I to say na hindi sila naging okay? Mm-hmm. But the point here is, to me, and to the parents who argue that way, is, eh paano kung hindi naging okay yun sa bata na yan? And that, that kind, the, these kinds of violence right now are carefully studied by experts 
mm. and say that it does not really help the child uh, child's development and it does not really help the children in the long run diba so parang that kind of so para i think parents nowadays should hopefully embrace the idea na there are certain familial traditions mm. that are left are better left you know as a thing of, of the past mm-hmm. otherwise diba that 8 over 10 that 8 over 10 will remain to be 8 over uh 8 over 10 kasi nga this 8 over 10 i would venture that this 8 over 10 children thinks that whatever experience whatever violence is inflicted upon them from their homes are acceptable iyan ang nas- sa tingin kong tingin ko diyan kung bakit yan eh, na para okay lang yan din disiplina lang so i think mm-hmm. that's the reason why there's eight o- over 10 but the point here is we cannot let the point here is it's still a form of violence and it's proven to have to affect the child uh child's growth and development and i think it is up to parents new and fresh parents mm-hmm. to abandon these kinds of mindset because it's always best to move forward when it comes to you know child parenting and what have you <laughs> Ayan. So thank you for that, attorney. So yeah, mga parents, you heard it from attorney Alfred, no? Hindi hindi ako parent na. Ah. <laughs> good advice. Uh, Wala. Wala lang ako magulang. Pero uh, kaya I cannot really say much eh, di ba? Kasi pedi yun eh, pedi mm-hmm. na na gumana sa kanila and they're okay right now. Mm-hmm. But I think that cycle of violence is is perpetuated because of the these kinds of beliefs. Yes. And who knows? Baka laging okay yan sa because you know, iba naman ang mi- mindset mo, iba din ang setup and environment mo mm-hmm. din as opposed to the setup and environment right now. Yeah. So parang there are so I think there's there has to be you know, parents should tread lightly in accepting you know, traditional disciplining actions mm. as opposed to and recognize that some of these actions may not result in the same way as it resulted to them mm-hmm. so yun lang naman yun lang ang inano ko sa mere recognition <laughs> pero of course discard niyo yan <laughs> ayo baka 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 no ako ng mga hate ano dito na hindi mo magulang ganyan ganyan <laughs> no na. but nevertheless whether you are a parent or not that was good advice attorney <laughs> so thank you so much for educating us, informing us, and clarifying things with us today. And Merry Merry Christmas sa inyo, attorney. Excited ka na ba sa Noche Buena? Yes, kaya nasa probinsya na ako actually. Ay, ready, ready na. <laughs> okay, po, maraming salamat po ulit and we hope to see you again soon. So mga katribu, watch Kalingang Katribu Legal Diaries live every Friday at 3.30pm on Daily Tribune's official Facebook page and Tribune Now on YouTube for the replay of the episodes. So once again, Merry Christmas mga katribu! I am Venice Bautista, see you next Friday and magandang hapon! Thank you.